Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the concept of clock jitter. It's quite interesting. We'll understand a real-time scenario and then we'll make an analogy to understand clock jitter. Assume that you are studying in a college and you indeed are and you have each lecture of one hour each. After every one hour, the college bell will go which will signify that lecture one is over and lecture two needs to be started or teacher one who was teaching in the classroom needs to leave and teacher two needs to enter. The bell signifies the period which is of one hour each. And here we will make an assumption that both your teachers would need one hour to complete their respective part of the syllabus and if they don't get that one hour they would not be able to do justice to that part of the syllabus. Now we are all set to understand jitter. Presume that one day in the college the bell is not ringing or the bell has malfunctioned. In this case both the teachers will trust their respective watches to enter the classroom. Let's understand the scenario. Teacher 1 has her watch which is 10 minutes late compared to the college watch and teacher 2 has a watch which is 10 minutes early compared to the college watch. So let's understand the scenario. Ideally when the bell was ringing, teacher 1 was entering at 9 am and after 1 hour when the bell would have gone, teacher 2 would have entered at 10 am. Now in the scenario when the bell is not working, the bell or the ring is not working, because teacher 1 has a watch 10 minutes late compared to the college watch, in the college watch it is 9 10 but at that point of time teachers 1's watch is showing 9 am and teachers 2's watch which is 10 minutes early to the college watch correct so her watch is showing 9 20 am now remember teacher 1 has technically started her lecture in her watch at 9 am in college watch at 9 10 am and in teachers 2 watch at 9 20 am now what happens is some point of time teachers 2's watch goes to 10 and she thinks that she needs to enter the classroom. At the same point of time the college watch is still showing 9.50. Why? Because teachers 2's watch is ahead by 10 minutes compared to college watch. However at the same time the teachers 1's watch is showing 9.40 only because it is 10 minutes behind the college watch. Now what's happened is teacher 2 has entered the classroom here and teacher 1 does not get one hour which she was looking for to complete the required part of her syllabus. How much time did she actually get? If you see if you compare the college watch also she started at 9.10 and she winded up at 9.50 or she had to wind up at 9.50 which gave her only 40 minutes. Compared to her watch, she started at 9 and she had to wind up at 9.40. Again, she got 40 minutes only. And compared to teachers to whose watch also, she started at 9.20 and she got time till 10, which is again 40 minutes only. What we understood here was, teachers one watch was late by 10 minutes and teachers two's watch was early to 10 minutes compared to the college watch, which gave very little time to the first teacher to complete because she was expecting one hour but she got only 40 minutes and hence she could not do justice to her part of the syllabus. A similar situation happens in digital circuits as well. Suppose there are two deep flip flops which I have drawn. This is deep flip flop 1, this is deep flip flop 2 and there is some combinational block. Combinational block is nothing but in our language in the analogy the time taken to compute when the input is ready to produce an output or to make it more simpler for you with an analogy this is the time taken for the teacher to complete her syllabus these are the clock periods so once say clock 1 is high it's a positive edge trigger D flip flop right so first cycle when clock 1 becomes high both these flip flops will become transparent transparent means whatever is at the input they will produce at the output Q1 it's an open open gate right so we'll take D1 Q2 Still, there is no new value given to D2, correct? So it will produce some garbage in the first cycle. In the second cycle, so this is the first cycle, correct? In the second cycle, what's going to happen is 
Understand this clock which is making both the gates transparent at the same time is nothing but my college ring or the college bell which is telling both my D flip flops to open their gates or to transfer whatever is at its input to its own output. When clock goes high again after one more clock cycle at that point of time the first flip flop will take a new input that is nothing but D2 correct I beg your pardon Q1 will be equal to D2. Whereas the second flip flop will take the input Q1 which has passed through this combinational block and has come here. Combinational block is nothing but something like an adder or something like that which computes you know anything multiplier anything. So some computation would have come and it will take this as the input for the timing let's call this as Q1 computed. So with every clock cycle my first flip flop will take a new input at that same point of time my second flip flop will produce the previous output which has been produced by this combinational block. In order for all this to happen correctly we have given enough time for this combinational block to compute its computation and hence I am giving my clock at time equal to 0 to the first one and time equal to t to the second one or in simple words I have a clock cycle from time equal to 0 to time equal to t. So this is nothing but my t clock which is nothing but the time given for my sequential and combinational blocks to compute and get the corrected output. Now technically you know that your clock should start here and it should end here then it will give your circuit a correct time or in our language one hour for the teacher to complete its lecture. However what happens is that this clock is coming from a clock source which is nothing but PLL and we expect this PLL to give us the clock at time equal to 0 and time equal to t which is not practically possible because the clock source which is a PLL is made on real chip correct and it will have interconnect wires interconnects are nothing but wires and we know that when wherever there is a wire a wire is nothing but an RC component so there will be some delay involved so PLL are made on real chips and have interconnects interconnects are wires and it also has some inbuilt variations during the manufacturing process. So it cannot produce the clock at exactly time equal to 0 and exactly time equal to t. It might produce the clock to the first flip flop either before 0 which is this edge 1 which I have shown or it can also produce after 0. Similarly it can do the same for flip flop 2 as well. It can produce before t or it can produce after t. So before 0 I have labeled it as 1, right at 0 is 2, after 0 is 3. This is just the labeling similarly for the other flip flop as well. So what happens is because of PLL there are some variations and the clock does not arrive exactly at the time which we want it to arrive. The PLL itself goes through manufacturing variations. It might also have interconnect delays and this variation will lead to my clock not arriving at the right time to both my flip flops and this is nothing but clock jitter. Let's presume that the worst case would be like our analogy that the clock to the first flip flop arrives at 3 and clock to the next flip flop arrives at 4 that means from 3 to 4 is now my clock period which was initially from 2 to 5 so technically I have lost some time or my period of the clock has decreased and this decrease of the clock period or this variation to be more specific this temporary variation in the clock jitter uh, in the clock period is nothing but clock jitter. I repeat the clock was going to arrive at edge 2 and edge 5 but because of some inherent variations in the clock generator circuit like PLL the clock does not arrive at 2 and 5 it either arrives before 2 or after 2 or before 5 and after 5. The worst case would be that it arrives after 2 that means first flip flop gets less time the first teacher arrived late remember and the second flip flop it arrives at edge 4 so it arrives early to the second flip flop whereas to the first flip flop it arrives late and now the clock period changes from 0 to 5 to 3 to 4 and this variation technically in this case it's decreased but 
the variation is what we are talking about this is the worst case uh, 3 to 4 is a worst case because you reduce your time so this variation though it's very minimum in the clock period due to the variation in the clock generator circuit is nothing but clock jitter just revising the same temporary variation of clock period we just saw that clock period varies and we can also define it as time varying deviation of a single clock period we saw that this was my clock right idly variation this is a time when it has to come but it can come here also before and it can get over after or it can also happen this way that it starts from here and it comes before also all the variations are possible so it says time varying deviations of a single clock period relative it's a relative phenomena right because we are comparing with an idle reference clock so relative to an idle reference clock time varying deviation of a single clock period relative to an idle reference clock is nothing but clock jitter now some of the sources of clock jitter clock generator circuit we just discussed that is nothing but a pll which has a voltage control oscillator which is an analog circuit and we know that analog circuit are highly sensitive to noise and it also is sensitive to power supply variations so this clock sensitive i beg your pardon this analog circuit is sensitive to noise and power supply variations which will lead to the clock not being produced at the time which we are looking it to be produced then the other reason could be some manufacturing device variations we can go into the details but it's beyond the scope so let's assume manufacturing device variations we also saw interconnect variations pll present on real time chip will have wires which lead to interconnect delays that might also lead to clock not being produced at the right time environmental variations being an analog circuit variations in temperature supply etc will also lead to the variations in the output which it produces and capacitive coupling this we are going to see shortly in a clip on crosstalk where you will understand when two interconnects or two wires are brought very close to each other because of the mutual or the coupling capacitance there are variations in both the interconnects we'll see this in details but these are some of the sources of clock jitter in the next clip we'll see clock skew and in further clips we'll also be seeing how to eliminate clock skew and clock jitter hope you have followed this and you have enjoyed it too stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much